The history of Anavar is a classic Big Pharma story, with American overlords, FDA drama, and lots and lots of money. So buckle up and let's get started. Our story begins in 1962 America, when Raphael Popo and Christopher Jung developed a groundbreaking compound called Oxandrolone at Searle Laboratories. At the time, Searle was a small pharmaceutical company known for its work in hormones and food additives. They would eventually bring us the first female birth control pill, the artificial sweetener aspartame, and the laxative Metamucil. Recognizing the unique properties of Oxandrolone, Searle Laboratories introduced it as a pharmaceutical drug in the United States in 1964. For all the best drug information, I use our software, Polypharm Solutions, where you can conduct drug interaction scans and predict drug side effects. Use the link in the description to sign up for the mobile app waitlist or use our web app for free. Unlike other anabolic steroids, Anavar exhibited remarkably weak androgenic effects in comparison to its anabolic properties, making it a fascinating prospect for medical applications. Anavar was primarily prescribed to patients experiencing involuntary weight loss due to various disorders. As part of their treatment for conditions such as HIV or cancer, where muscle regrowth was crucial, Oxandrolone provided them much needed muscle maintenance without additional side effects. For almost 10 years, Oxandrolone research at Searle was going according to plan. While Oxandrolone was very interesting, at the time, their unicorn and darling child was aspartame, the artificial sweetener. They saw the potential of billions of people consuming it and submitted it for review to the FDA in 1973, and aspartame was approved for consumption very quickly. Back in those days, the FDA approval was extremely relaxed. They gave the companies the benefit of the doubt when it came to their research and didn't reproduce safety studies. But very quickly, this would all change, and Searle's whole world would be turned upside down. An independent researcher conducted experiments on two different blood pressure medications produced by Searle. In this research, they concluded that they were both causing cancer in rats. Not only this, but they were also accusing Searle of covering up this data and misleading the FDA. The Pandora's box of accusations were opened, and the FDA had to prove that they weren't asleep at the wheel. They initiated a $500 million investigation called the Bresto Report. In this investigation, they looked into four of Searle's drugs, including their new unicorn aspartame. This probe uncovered such sloppy science that the FDA wrote a 33-page letter demanding that the U.S. Attorney's Office criminally prosecute Searle in front of a grand jury. Despite three pleas from the FDA, this indictment never took place. How does someone get out of this sticky situation? Do they conduct their own studies to a higher quality and prove safety? Maybe they drop the compound and make a safer derivative. Too complicated for Big Pharma. Searle decided to simply hire the man who was supposed to be prosecuting them, Samuel Skinner, the US Attorney General. Skinner left office to join Searle and left the prosecution to his assistant. This greatly delayed the process of prosecution, and Skinner's assistant failed to act before the statute of limitations passed, freeing Searle of their fears of a grand jury. Fifteen months later, Skinner's assistant would also quit his job at the Attorney General's office and would join Skinner at Searle's law firm. What a coincidence! Despite dodging a bullet and avoiding a grand jury, Searle still had big problems. They had a reputation beyond repair, and their biggest earner, Aspartame, was discontinued by the FDA. In 1977, the Searle family, who owned 32% of the company, stepped in to put a stop to the madness. It was this decision that would change the history of the company forever. They decided to bring in Donald Rumsfeld as CEO, an American overlord who served as both the youngest and the oldest Secretary of Defense, first for Ford in the 70s and then for Bush in the 2000s. Rumsfeld earned his reputation as a ruthless executive on multiple occasions, currently most well known for leading the military planning and execution of the US invasion of Afghanistan and Iraq. He pushed hard to send as small of a force as possible to both conflicts, a concept codified as the Rumsfeld Doctrine. When Rumsfeld assumed his position, he had one single objective, defeat the FDA at all costs. Under Rumsfeld's leadership, research and development was slashed across the board, including Oxandrolone as Searle focused on fighting the FDA for approval of aspartame. And on January 22nd, 1981, the day after Rumsfeld's dear friend Ronald Reagan was elected into office, Searle applied to have aspartame approved by the FDA after being denied less than just a year earlier. Except now things were different. President Reagan handpicked a new FDA commissioner, and Dr. Arthur Hayes got his beak wet by overruling the FDA's previous unanimous decision to ban aspartame. A few years later, he would too leave his position at the FDA for a job at Searle. By 1983, sales of aspartame had reached $336 million, and Rumsfeld had won the battle of regulation. It was time to cash in and get out. 
Monsanto, a massive food company who doesn't shy away from controversy, showed interest in purchasing the company and offered a whopping $2.3 billion. Despite being on the brink of disaster just three years prior, Rumsfeld felt emboldened by his recent successes and urged the board to reject the offer, saying it was underpriced. The board not only rejected the offer, but put out a statement that they would not sell the company and stay independent. Just four months later, Rumsfeld's bluff paid off, and the Monsanto company announced its acquisition of GD Searle for $2.7 billion. The new parent company, Monsanto, did not share the same enthusiasm for Anavar. The drug had garnered negative publicity due to its illicit use by bodybuilders, and consequently, in 1989, production of Anavar was discontinued. Nevertheless, the unique qualities of Anavar could not be overlooked. Unlike many anabolic steroids, oxandrolone had fewer side effects while still delivering impressive results. Recognizing its potential, Biotechnology General Corporation, later known as Savion Pharmaceuticals, conducted successful trials in 1995 and released it under the brand name Oxandrin. Today, Anavar continues to be utilized in clinical settings for various medical conditions. Its legitimacy in medical practice has also given it a good reputation in bodybuilding circles, and pharmaceutical supply has made it more accessible for illicit use. Despite the potential side effects associated with Anavar, it remains a popular choice for many individuals today. If you want to find out how Anavar works, check out this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more drug videos. Thanks.